Hello, in this video, we're gonna be looking at lesson 4.6 on solving systems of equations by graphing. This is the first lesson in unit four, part B, which is on systems of equations. Today, our essential question will be, how do you use a graph to solve a system of linear equations? A system of linear equations is a set of two linear equations in the same variables. Most often, those variables are going to be x and y. The solution of the system of linear equations is an ordered pair, x, y, that satisfies each equation in the system. When we solve a system by graphing, it will be the point where the lines intersect. So we'll graph the two lines in the same coordinate plane, and we'll look for the point where the two lines intersect each other. The solution is that point, and we need to make sure that we write it as an ordered pair with the x-coordinate first and the y-coordinate second. Let's look at a few examples for solving a system of equations by graphing. We're asked to use a graph to find the solution of each system of equations and to check your answer. Remember that when we graph a line in slope-intercept form, that's y equals mx plus b. The first thing we want to do is plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the b value, and that's going to be the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. After you've plotted the y-intercept, then you use the slope, which is the m value, to plot more points. Remember that the slope is the rise over run. The top number of the slope tells us how many to go up or down, and the bottom number tells us how many to move to the right. Remember that if it's a positive number in the numerator, we go up, and if it's a negative number, we go down. For run, we're always going to go to the right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and graph our first line here. y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. I'm going to start with my y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 3, so I'm going to place a dot at negative 3, and then I'm going to use my slope to get more points. Since the slope here is 2 thirds, the 2 tells us how many we need to go up. Since it's positive, I'm going to go up 2. So from that dot, count up 2, 1, 2, then go right 3, 1, 2, 3, and make a new point there. And then you want to just keep doing that until you're out of space. So I'm going to continue to go up 2 over 3, and I can go one more time. And then when I'm out of room, going up 2, right 3, to get the other half of the line, you're going to start back at the y-intercept, and you're going to go down to left 3. And you want to get as many points as you can, because we need to be able to see where these two lines intersect. And they're going to intersect at a nice point, one of these dots that I'm making. All right, so now I've made all the points I can fit, so now I'm going to go ahead and connect them with a straight line. Now that my first line is plotted, I want to do the same with my next line. My next line has a y-intercept of 8, so I'm going to start at 8 on my y-axis, and then the slope is 5 over 2. Since 5 is positive, we're going to go up 5, right 2. But you can see that I'm already out of space. I can only go up 2, and then I'm off my graph. So instead of going up 5 and right 2, we can go the opposite direction, which is down 5 and left 2. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then over 1, 2, and I'm going to make a point right there. Then I'm just going to keep doing that, down 5, left 2, and the next dot I end up here, then down 5, left 2, and you can see that I find that point where they cross right there. I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots now, and we can see that our two lines intersect right here. The ordered pair where the two lines intersect is going to be the solution. So you can see that that ordered pair has an x-coordinate of negative 6 and a y-coordinate of negative 7. So it appears that our answer is negative 6, negative 7. But we do want to double check to make sure that that's the correct answer. To check your answer, you're just going to plug those points into both of the two original equations. So for my first equation, y equals 2 thirds x minus 3, I'm going to replace my x value with negative 6 and my y value with negative 7. So we have negative 7 for y should be equal to 2 thirds times negative 6 minus 3. And feel free to use a calculator if you need to along the way. Uh, 2 thirds times negative 6 is going to be negative 4. And negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. 
So it does work in our first equation. Negative 7 is equal to negative 7. Now I'm going to check the other equation. y equals 5 over 2x plus 8. It should work in this equation as well. Replace the y with negative 7 and replace the x with negative 6. And when we do that, we end up with negative 7 equals negative 15 plus 8. And negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. So because negative 7 is equal to negative 7, and it works in both equations, we know that the correct answer is indeed the ordered pair negative 6, negative 7. Here's another system that we can solve with a graph as well. I'm going to start by graphing the first line, y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 6. Remember, the 6 is the y-intercept, so you're going to begin by placing a dot at 6 on your y-axis. Then we can use our slope to get more points. Here, the slope is negative 1 over 4. And now that it's a negative, we're going to go down 1 and then write 4. Remember that we always go to the right. The bottom number will always be positive. So starting at the 6, I'm going to count down 1, then write 4. And I'm going to keep doing that until I'm out of space. So that's as far as I can go down 1, right 4. To get the graph filled, to get a few more points, we can go up 1 and left 4 to get the other side of the line. And it looks like I can get two more points there. So I have my first line plotted. Now I'm just going to connect it. There we go. Now let's plot our second line. Our second line is y equals negative x plus 9. Remember when there's no number in front of x, it's a 1. So here, our slope is negative 1. I'm going to write that as a fraction, negative 1 over 1. I still want to start my first dot at my y-intercept, which is 9. And then we're going to go down 1, right 1. And I want to keep going until I'm out of space. So down 1, right 1. There we go. I can get one more point if I go up 1, left 1. And now we can see that our two lines intersect right here. And the ordered pair of that point is 4, 5. So the solution to our system is 4, 5. We should just double check that answer quick by plugging it into both equations. You could do the check right inside your calculator if you wanted to. In my first equation, I'm going to replace the y with 5. So 5 equals negative 1 fourth times x, x is 4, plus 6. Then I could double check here, negative 1 fourth times 4 is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 6 is 5. So it works in the first equation. Then we need to check that it also works in the second equation. So there's my second equation. I'm going to replace the y with 5. So 5 should be equal to negative x, which is negative 4, plus 9. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. So 5 equals 5. And that means our solution is correct since it works when we check it in both equations. The check is not required, but it is a good idea just to verify that you've done it correctly. It'd be really simple to make a mistake when you're counting your slope and maybe have the point be off. So just taking an extra minute and checking your answer will help you know if you have the correct answer. And then if your answer isn't correct, if it doesn't work in both, you can go back and you can look at your graphs and try them again. In our next couple examples, we're going to look at two special types of systems. Two lines will not always cross at exactly one point. It's possible that the two lines might never cross each other, or they might cross at a lot of different points. In example two, we're going to look at graphs of systems that either have infinitely many or no solution. For our first equation, notice how it's already in the correct form y equals negative 3x plus 5. That is in slope-intercept form. I'm going to start by placing a dot at 5 on my y-intercept. And then if my slope is negative 3, remember you can turn it into a fraction by placing it over 1. So we're going to go down 3 over 1. And I'm going to keep doing that until I'm out of space. Down 3 over 1. And then I'm going to get the other side of the line by going up 3 and left 1. All right, there we go. Our next equation needs to be rearranged. Notice how it's not in the form y equals mx plus b. So we're going to rearrange this so that we can get it in the form y equals mx plus b. The first thing I want to do is move that 15x to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 15x from both sides. And when we do that, we now have 5y equals negative 15x. I'm going to write the x first. 
And then it's 25, which is positive, so plus 25. Lastly, if we go ahead and divide by 5, that'll get the y by itself, and we need to divide all of the numbers by 5. That's going to simplify it down to y equals negative 3x plus 5. Well, now that I've written it in slope-intercept form, I can go ahead and graph it on the coordinate plane. The y-intercept is 5, and the slope is negative 3 over 1. Well, notice how when I do that, I'm going to have the same line here. These points are right on top of my other line. So these two lines are the same line. They're right on top of each other. We say that this system has infinitely many solutions. And the reason there's infinitely many solutions is because these two lines, since they're the same line, they're going to intersect each other at an infinite number of points. You might want to make a note in your notes that infinitely many solutions is going to occur when the two lines are the same. When two lines are the same, they're going to be right on top of each other, and they're going to share an infinite number of points in common. Here's another system. And again, my first equation is already written in the form y equal mx plus b. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that first. The y-intercept is positive 6, and the slope here is 2. Remember, you can turn that into a fraction by writing it as 2 over 1. So from the 6, you're going to go up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. And now that I'm out of room going up 2, right 1, I'm going to get the other half of the line by going down 2 and left 1. Here we go. The second equation isn't quite ready to graph. It's not in the form y equals mx plus b. We need to get rid of that 2 in front of the y. So to undo a 2 times y, we just divide everything by 2, all three of the numbers. So when we clean that up, we end up with an equation of y equals 2x plus 4. So now that's ready to graph. I'm going to write my 2 as a 2 over 1. And then I'm going to place my dot at 4, the y-intercept, and I'm going to count up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Now that I'm out of space going up 2, right 1, I'm going to go down 2 and left 1. And you'll notice how these two lines are not intersecting one another. These two lines are parallel to each other. They have the same slope, 2 over 1, but they have different y-intercepts. Two lines with the same slope are never going to cross each other. They're parallel lines. And if we're looking for the ordered pair that the two lines share in common, they don't share any points in common. So a system like this is said to have no solution. If the two lines are parallel, they're not going to share any points in common. So in your notes, I would make a note that the lines are parallel. If you graph two lines and you find that they're parallel to each other, that means that the system will have no solution. If you graph your two lines and you find they're the same and right on top of each other, like they were in the previous example, then it would be infinitely many solutions. To end our lesson today, I just have a few different try now problems that I want you to try on your own. Remember that for any problem where there's no number in front of x, remember that it's a 1x. So this first equation here is 1x, and you can make it a fraction by placing it over 1. For number 2, the first equation is ready to go in the form y equal mx plus b, but the second equation here, you're going to have to do a little bit of rearranging to get that y by itself before you graph your lines. Go ahead and pause the video now and give these two problems a try. Please pause the video. Here are your solutions. The first two lines should have crossed at negative 1, 7, so your ordered pair solution is negative 1, 7. The second two lines, you can plot the first one starting at 7 and go up 1 over 2. For our second equation, I had to rearrange it to the form y equals mx plus b, so I started by subtracting 4x on both sides. Then to get rid of the negative 8 in front of the y, we have to divide everything by negative 8. When we simplify a negative 4 divided by a negative 8, remember that a negative divided by a negative makes a positive. So right there, I have a positive 4 over 8, which is the same as positive 1 over 2. And then 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. Well, when you plot those two lines, you'll find that since they both have a slope of 1 half, 
They're parallel to each other. They never cross, so that means the system has no solution. And this concludes lesson 4.6 on solving systems of equations by graphing. Thanks for watching and good luck as you practice some problems on your own. Bye.